I am going to talk a little bit about what's happening with the uh, challenge of the ten to twenty thousand dollars of forgiveness, as well as um, I'm not gonna just end. I'm not gonna just talk about news. I'm going to also inform borrowers about the different forms of deferment and comparing them to income-driven repayment options. Um, I think it's really, really important because it's looking more and more like uh, the forgiveness uh, is maybe striked down. And so I want to start educating borrowers about what relief options there are. So um, first, I'm going to start with news of what's happening in the court. I am outside in front in front of my house on the porch um so the sun it's getting a little darker a little earlier so um i'm not as um in as bright of a sunlight as i would like but i promise you this episode will be worth it um so first and foremost um there is now a second challenge um that the supreme court will be listening to and we'll be hearing. The first challenge uh, that the Supreme Court accepted was basically six states challenging the president's authority to offer blanket forgiveness. This second challenge is based on um, a more administrative procedures challenge because the government and um, agencies uh, like the Department of Education usually release a commenting period for the public to comment before they actually uh, release a ruling or a program. So, for example, the forgiveness didn't have a public commenting period, and so the lawsuit is over the procedures of how the Department of Ed needs to act um, in order to execute something like blanket forgiveness. So the second one is very much procedural, um, So we'll see what ends up happening, but like I mentioned in the last video, it seems that the Supreme Court, um, the current sitting Supreme Court is probably likely going to rule in favor of the plaintiffs filing (laughs) the cases, um, in which case uh, there may likely not be the $10,000 to $20,000 of forgiveness. That's what it's looking like more and more. I'm really sorry to say that Um, the two plaintiffs in the procedural case, the second case uh, that came forward is one saying, I have private loans. Why will I not be offered forgiveness? I did not get an opportunity to comment. The Department of Ed didn't hear my comments. And the second one is, wait, why only 20,000 of relief? How about us healthcare workers, public servants, et cetera, et cetera, that worked our tails off during this pandemic? We have more than 20,000. Why can't we get special qualification, basically, right? Um, so uh, these are two individuals that didn't get a chance to comment in the normal commenting period that administrative, basically, departments uh, tend to do before releasing policy. So those are the details on the lawsuit. Now, I want to um, I want to screen share here the uh, USA.gov um, site that talks about different forbearance and deferment options. And I want to go into a few details. Um, There is, I want to talk specifically about the unemployment um, deferment versus IDR. There are other forms of deferment. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to shrink my face here so I can go into the USA.gov site. And I first want to start by saying there are, of course, they first talk about income-driven plans and, um, There are all types of um, deferments. For example, there are economic hardship deferments. There's deferment because you are currently undergoing cancer treatment. Um, There are deferments for graduate fellowships. Um, And by the way, economic hardship deferment includes things like the Peace Corps, includes um, service to our country. And of course, there's in-school deferment because you went back to school. There's military um, service deferment. Um, There's all types of deferment, rehabilitation, training deferment. I want to talk about unemployment deferment because um, it's the question I hear uh, about the most. Like, I'm unemployed right now. Um, I can't afford, if if we get kicked back into repayment, if I don't have a job yet and I can't afford to pay it, like, what are my options, right? So I want to talk about that a little Of course, I'm going to put a link to this um, for anybody to be able to visit if any of the other forms of deferment applies to them. But I'm going to talk a little bit about 
unemployment deferment. Um, I'm going to open the link to the application so you can see it. But essentially, um, unemployment deferment, um, there is a max limit of up to three years. Um, obviously, obviously, um, you know, people may find jobs within that time period, so they don't use the full um, unemployment deferment, but it's maxed out at three years. So that's just an FYI. Um, I want to debunk a few um, questions and myths. And the myths I hear is, oh, interest doesn't accrue on your student loan while you're in economic, I'm sorry, while you're in unemployment deferment. And um, I've even seen news articles written about it. And that is not true. Okay. So I want to address that first and foremost. Um, I mean, even the Department of Ed website says here that there are loan types where you generally are not responsible for, pay, for, for paying the accruing interest while you're in deferment. And then there are loan types where you are responsible. And so it's not like a blanket, oh, if I'm in economic, um, I'm, I'm in, sorry, unemployment deferment, I don't pay interest. That's untrue because it's based on the loan type that you originated while you're in school. So for example, if you have subsidized loans of any type, whether they're FFEL loans, subsidized loans, Perkins loans, um, then those loans that are subsidized don't accrue interest while you are in unemployment deferment. Um, if you have unsubsidized loans, FFEL, direct parent, um, direct plus loans, parent plus loans, things like that, then those loans accrue interest while you are on unemployment deferment. So I just want to be very, very clear about that. Um, so it's not like, oh, if I go into this deferment, I will have no more accumulating interest. Okay, so I want to clarify that again. Um, so now let's talk about what's the difference, and then I'm going to show this application again, but what's the difference between an unemployment deferment and IDR? So um, the way I would make a decision about what's best if you are unemployed when we get kicked back into repayment is what's great about this payment pause one right now is there's no interest accruing, right? So this is how I'd make a decision. Um, if you go into the Loan Sense software, and get an analysis and you're projected to get forget student loan forgiveness, whether you're a public or private sector employee and you want to get student loan forgiveness, these three years of not making any payments count towards student loan forgiveness. That's huge. That means three years less time you have to pay back your student loans. That's a huge winner, right? Well, if you're projected to get some form of student loan forgiveness already, then going into an income-driven plan and paying $0 and getting 12 months of that counted towards loan forgiveness, and that will extend your um, number of months of loan forgiveness by an additional 12 months, which means you'll go from three years to four years of loan forgiveness where you made $0 payments and you're going to get more and more accumulating student loan forgiveness it may be more advantageous for you to just enroll into an income-driven plan rather than go into unemployment deferment because unemployment deferment does not count towards loan forgiveness. Okay, I want to make that super, super clear. Unemployment deferment does not count towards loan forgiveness. So the benefits of getting um, not paying interest on your subsidized loans may actually be less beneficial than getting your balance um, or your payment you're not making for 12 months, um, the benefit of having your interest covered on subsidized loans may actually be less than the benefit of not paying, of paying $0 and having it count toward loan forgiveness, right? Let's say your normal payment's $200 and you don't make that for 12 months, right? $200 times 12 is $2,400. How much interest is going to accrue or that's not going to accrue? You can compare that and also what's the ultimate loan forgiveness you're going to get, right? Those are all things to weigh and that's how you're going to know. If you generally um, will have experienced a salary increase such that you're not qualified or good candidate for student loan forgiveness and you become unemployed, then unemployment deferment may be the option for you. Okay, so I just want to go over that. If you have any questions, those are the types of questions you can ask us here at Loan Sense that we can help you with. The first thing I recommend is to go into our app, app.myloansense.com, and literally answer the seven questions, upload your loans, and get a full analysis. If there are any questions or decisions you need to make, we are on standby to help you make those decisions. Please ask us comment. Please ask us questions in the comments below. Share this information if you think this will apply to anybody who has experienced unemployment or is currently unemployed. 
and worry about how they're going to make a payment when student loans get kicked in. I'm sorry, by the way, I, my neighbor's dog keeps barking. Um, but please be generous with this information and share it. And um, we're on standby to assist. I hope this information was helpful. I will see you next week.